What up, everyone? Hope everyone's having an amazing Tuesday. Um, I thought we got it started off big time yesterday with with on a Monday, killing it. Um, yeah, guys, so happy to be on here. So happy that everyone's gonna we're gonna have a, a few people on here. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, gonna get my boy on right here, Luke Hawkinson. Let me just let me just tell you a little bit about him first before he comes on. I want to jump right in. Um, my boy, since day one, a young kid came into Shattuck, '97, playing with the '95s, um, at a very good, at a, at a, in a very good team. We had we had players on the U.S. national team. We had kids on the Panamanian national team, Latvian national team, going to Euros. We had top quality players, and this kid came in. You know, still he was very confident. Came in and we all knew from day one he was a quality player. Since then, went on to college. Um, from college, went on to the pros, and now he's uh, was drafted in the MLS um, by um, by Nashville. And since then, he's gone to Charlotte, and he's in Charlotte right now. We're gonna get him on re real quick. We're gonna get him on, and uh, let's chop it up. One of my one of my best friends. Um, super happy to have him. On. Let's get hit. Hawk on. Let's get him on. What up, bro? Hey, big man. What's going on? How you doing? I, good, bro. Uh, just got done. I was at the field this morning with some of the guys. Uh, just came back and hopped on. So I, thanks for the introduction. Absolutely, bro. Um, obviously, we talked a little bit yesterday, bro. Let's just jump. Let's just jump into it, bro. Let, what What are you up to now? What are you up to now? Let everyone know what you're up to. Yeah. Uh, Man, the last few months have been crazy. Um, it's been uh, it's been a ride. Graduated college in December. Uh, graduated early, uh, three and a half years, which is awesome. I got my degrees to fall back on. Yeah, that was always the plan. And then from there, uh, it was just kind of how to turn pro. For me, lucky enough, that was the draft. Um, so, got drafted uh, by the new expansion team, Nashville SC. Uh, yeah. Huge opportunity. Um, you know, you don't have a guarantee of a contract going into preseason nope. with an MLS team as a, as a rookie. So I had to go in there, uh, spend preseason with them. And on the last day of preseason, they offered me an MLS contract, which was obviously a dream come true. An opportunity yeah, that I've been working for my whole life. Uh, and then on that day, they kind of laid out a plan for me, um, which is basically I need game time, right? So this entire season, they had kind of had their lineup. They had their guys that they needed. But for me, I need experience as a young player, which was um, a loan option. So there was a couple yeah. of different teams in the USL Championship that uh, I was looking at uh, working with. Uh, and Charlotte ended up presenting an opportunity for me. Uh, and actually, the second pick over on the draft, Jack Mayer, uh, me and him are roommates uh, yeah, here yeah. in Charlotte. Uh, and so I'm on loan here for the season. Yeah. Bro, that's quality. I mean, I, I said a little bit about it. Obviously, you know, we go back to the Shattuck days, to the beginning. Um, yeah. You know, you came in my junior year. I think I think you were in eighth grade. Yeah, yeah, eighth grade. And you yeah. came to Shattuck. So I was, I think, a junior. Yeah, I think I was a junior. That was the year that your that was the year that your team that the sixteens made it to the playoffs like we did and lost out lost out by one game. Um, you know, talk about coming into Shattuck. I've I've asked everyone from Shattuck and I, I I said, talk about coming into Shattuck from having played, you know, normal club. You were at MTA, right, before that? So yeah, was that MTA, talk, yeah. talk about normal club life, then to moving to a boarding school. Obviously, you were a day student, as was I. But coming into a program away from your family, away from your parents, per se, and, you know, being at a top-level program as the youngest kid coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, it's hard to explain. Um, I have a lot of fond memories. But to just kind of sum it up to you, my experience, it was like – um real quick learning um very fast maturity that had to take place because at yeah. club life it was like yeah. all right i was into national team pools when i was a young age i was the best player in the, uh, on my club team yeah. uh we actually had a few pl good players after i left mta um there's a couple of uh, pros that were on that team but after yeah, i left yeah. mta i was at st paul for a bit um and i was the best player on that team and then going to shattuck when i visited um it was a crazy experience we're on parade field and i'll never forget this uh, you weren't on the team, but it was John Lahano, uh, yeah. Wesley Schrock, Keith, and these guys. 
uh, and we were doing a fi classic Bob Mool and 5v5 on Parade Field. Yeah. And um, I showed up, and I was in seventh grade. So I was – this was oh, my yeah, visit. Yeah. And um, I got into the field in the 5v5 game. And basically, my idea of being a stupid kid was find the best player and basically just – mark him because i didn't yeah. know I, I just didn't know very much that's great bro that's a great way to start at least yeah and, and having and the confidence having the confidence and so yeah. um gosh i've actually never told anyone this story so uh john lahano uh was the best player i think on that team at the time and he was yeah, playing five five and he was right in the middle and i just started following him around and i was in seventh grade and john was a junior in high school yeah yeah time. and i just followed him around like Lou and uh it was crazy because he started getting really angry uh and then Wesley started banging some goals for us and all of a sudden we were up at 5v5 and yeah. I'm like cool this is going great but little do I know Shattuck 5v5s the intensity the competition is the unlike anything you've ever seen it's a professional environment for high right, school yeah. kids and uh obviously John knew I was a visitor and I was a young kid and I was marking him and in the middle of the game John grabs me by the shirt and tosses me to the ground and i'm a visiting kid for the school yeah yeah and it was at that point which is so funny that i stood back up and i said this is where i need to be because i'm not <laughs> gonna get a better environment for me to play soccer and grow than this right here so that was in seventh grade eighth grade uh your dad my my coach uh decided to take me in i was an eighth grade kid um i was really lucky to get the opportunity because not a lot of young kids yeah. get the opportunity to get to play up two years for you know in a da level and right. every single day um at 13 and 14 years old going against kids that are 17 at juniors in high school right. i'll be honest i was nervous every single day right. in practice because i w didn't want to be the one holding anyone else back right because everyone was trying to get a college scholarship some kids were trying to play professionally and so every get, single day at least get at least get to the 18s i mean at least get to the 18s at the very least right. at the very least right. because they want to graduate from shattuck uh, and so every single day I needed to bring it. There was some days where I was 13 years old playing against 17 year olds where I would be in the bathroom before practice, just sitting there thinking to myself, okay, you, you need to bring it today. You have to go as yeah. hard as you can just because I didn't want guys like Heath coming at me, Corey Kiddo, Akeem, all these different guys in this environment that were so much older and, and, and I didn't want to let them down. And then it got to the point where, you know what, I don't want to let myself down, which was a huge shift in my mindset at the end of my eighth grade year. It's like, guess what? I can play at this level and I can push it even further. Yeah. So now it's not about like letting the team down. It's not, it's not letting myself down because I can play with these guys. Bro, now. bro, obviously, obviously you're, you're on a different mentality than a lot of kids. And that's why you made it on the team, first of all. And then you continue to now look at you. But like at that, you know, how many kids would have been like, oh, John's a dick. Like, you know, forget him. Like, I don't need this place. Like, you know, making you feel like you're you're less than you are and all this stuff. But you, look, you looked at it and you said, you know what? I need to be here. This is exactly where I need to be. I need to be, you know, playing at this level week in, week out. And that's how I was as well. Like, when anytime I went overseas and I felt like I was inferior to someone, I was like, yo, I want to be here. I want to yeah. be here and see if I can make it. Because when yeah. I do make it, I'll be over there. And, yeah. bro, just... I mean, that mentality is why, you know, uh, I, always, I always looked at you and I was like, you know what, this kid is going to do something. Let me, you know, hang out with him a little bit more. But, bro, just going on a side note about the visitors that came in, I was literally just talking to my dad about it. When visitors came in, how ruthless we were to them. I mean, so, so, I mean there, were times when, there were times when people would come up to me and be like, Andrew, you need to lay off a little bit. Like, yeah. like I always talk about Jake Burke, bro. The time he came in and visited – was when we were at playoffs, when we were going to playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were playing 5v5 five, five five, uh, with the small goals um, on the parade field after training. Like, I mean, this is – like, if anyone's watching, this is what we would do all the time. We would go out after training. Like, training would be done in the afternoon. We'd hang out, and we'd literally just go out and play in the, at night. Everyone would yeah. just go out and play at night. Yeah, we'd play, 100%. We'd play 5v5, five five and yeah. Jake Burke was there. And, like, he just let in a goal or something. He's on my team. He just let in the goal or something. He was, like, tying his shoe. And I just smacked the ball at him. And I said, <laughs> what, what, what are you tying your shoe for? Tie, uh, tie it once and you're done. <laughs> and, uh, and, but I remember – but that's the thing. is like, people are like, oh, you bullied. You bullied him and all this stuff. But the thing is, the people who came back were, like, our best friends. Like, yeah, you, you, you came back and we all respected you. And, we, like, yeah. John, you know, John, I'm sure afterwards – 
was talking to you, hanging out, all that stuff. Yeah. Like we were boys. But that was how that was how we made sure that the people who come here need to be of a quality, of a certain standard. Not just yeah. not just physically, not just technically, but also in, mentally, because Shattuck is not an easy place to play. I mean, look at no. Mark Brown. I no. absolutely murdered him this his first year. I murdered him this first year. And he came back and I had so much respect for him after that. So uh and another side note I don't know if you were there for that one where the kid had the cup. He was, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, were, we, were all, we were all there at the table. Everyone, me, John, Isaiah, um, uh, who was the uh, uh, Steve enemy, all these guys were there. Yeah. And this one, this one kid had his drink. And we, we pulled the old, hey, look at Mr. Schaefer over there. And everyone would turn around, pour a little salt <laughs> in his drink. <laughs> <laughs> pour, oh, pour a little oh. salt pour a little salt in this drink he turned back around and we say oh okay um and then we do it again pour, and then at the end we just be like hey guys great training session today here's a toast appreciate you guys yeah. coming out working hard and we'd all drink and he drank and he what is in this and all this stuff never came back no respect no respect <laughs> for him but, hey, um, hey, quick shout out Akeem and uh McQuelly, bro McQuelly, yeah, yeah. good to see you man For, bro hope all is well bro Thanks for joining. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but let me. I, I want to. I want to stay on this. I want to stay on this fact that it was hard for you at the beginning, where you literally felt uncomfortable. You were very uncomfortable your first year, playing yeah. with these playing with these players. I mean, you named them. I didn't. I didn't really take the time to look at who was on that team, but that is a quality team. Yeah. And you came in three years younger, uh, four years younger than some of these guys an equality team and you said you were in the bathroom at sometimes and just saying, Hey, I need to do, I need to do this. I need to do this because yeah. in your head, that's what you needed to do. But in your heart at the time, you're like, I'm very uncomfortable. Talk about like how that helped you throughout the years. Like obviously the next year you were, you're still two years younger than everyone. Then the year after that, you're still younger than everyone. Now yeah. you're in a, you're in an MLS and USL environment where you're younger than everyone. Talk about how that that situation helped you. Did it did it get better throughout the years? Where you're like, okay, I know how to I know how to do this now, yeah. or has it always been? You know, have have you always had to been mind over matter? Yeah, I think it's best summed up. Um, actually, uh, my coach in college, uh, Mr. Bola, which I think he summed it up best. Um, and I never realized it at the time, but you can say it's you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. Um, and for me not realizing I like was like out of my zone as a 13 year old. It was just me forced into this environment where I had to adapt. I had to grow, had to yeah. learn really, really quickly. Uh, and for me, that was just me constantly every single day, um, learning, growing and being uncomfortable, but then being comfortable in that. Um, and that's something that everyone needs just not, just not in soccer, but in your life. Right. So change is a good thing I've found. Um, yeah when you get into a place like Shattuck that is kind of a small confined bubble um, it presents you with an opportunity to grow but it also presents you with an opportunity every single day in my situation it was playing with older kids to challenge yourself to push yourself beyond that limit to basically say wow this is uncomfortable I don't want to do yeah, this right yeah. now but guess what you have to push it because you don't want to let yourself down you don't want to let the other guys down uh, and it was a challenge every single day right so I mean Obviously, Shattuck is, I mean, not many people, if any, like, the amount of people who go to Shattuck and, it's, and get that experience is so minuscule. Talk about, you know, where did that, where did that come from? Because obviously, you know, you weren't at Shattuck, at, uh, the year before you weren't at Shattuck. So what happened from, you know, from being an MTA, being on the club team, to then coming to Shattuck, where before that did that mindset come from? Or... It was it just like God given? Well, um, I think uh, I think everyone's different with this, and so what I want to say first is my experience is unique to me. Um, what I've gone through, not everyone goes through. Exactly, um, and that's really important to learn. Some people think that that, that drive inside of you is innate. Yeah. that it comes with you from when you were born. Some people think that you're molded into that from the conditions in your environment. Um, for me, I think it was kind of a, a mixture of having that drive that was natural, yeah. but then I also think it was a product of my environment growing up. 
uh, yeah. just kind of being tested at home constantly, uh, different things that you got to go through. Uh, and I think that also pushed me to kind of uh, um, not get to a better place, but kind of put myself in a position where I can succeed past my own, uh, my own hometown, my own family beyond that. Yeah. Would, you, would you say that, you know, how much of that had to do with the passion of the game? You know, passion for soccer. Oh, right? huge. Yeah, yeah, massive, I think. I think right. for me, it was uh, once I found out that I was kind of good at it, um, that right. just drove me even more. It's like anything in life. Um, you enjoy yeah, exactly. something that you are good at. Uh, and, and the more you do it over and over and over, the more you fall in love with it. I mean, the more, yeah, the more and more I think about it, there's two things that I've really realized, you know, during this time. And that's, and one is like, people aren't going to help you until they realize that you're willing to help yourself. So, yeah. you know, you going to Shattuck, you coming to training every single day, John throwing you on the ground and you not giving up. You know, people see that. People see that and they say, you know what? This guy has something. I want to help him out. I want to do more. I want to see if I can help him. A lot of people that I talk to are sitting, on, sitting at home asking me questions or asking people questions like, how do, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I... People want to help the people who are helping themselves already. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, get yourself into a situation that is uncomfortable. Get through it. And people will see that and people will come and help. Yep. That's when the help. That's when the help. Yep. That's when the help. That's when the help comes. You got to help yourself before others help you. Um, but yeah. So your time at Shattuck, um, Talk about how it evolved. So like, obviously, you were in middle school when you came in. You were a young kid, thirteen. Um, talk about uh, going to all the way through Shattuck, eventually being a senior and graduating. How did your role evolve? You know, what were some of the lessons you learned? Um, Coach Carter was there when you, yeah, Coach Carter, you were Coach Carter's last yeah, year, Yeah, right? Coach Carter's last year was my senior year. Right, so. Yeah, so I was there for Coach Carter's last year. So he didn't get the end on, uh, he didn't get the end on top, but it's okay. Um, no. Go ahead, and, no, go ahead and talk about no. your time at Shattuck and going through, uh, going through the process. Um, I would say, uh, gosh, there's just so many things. Um, yeah, every yeah. year at Shattuck presented a different situation, different opportunity, different challenges, just because you had a different team. Um, so for my first three, first two years, two and a half years, I played under your dad, Bob Mullen, uh, and myself. Shout and out, he's on here. <laughs> Coach, how's it going? I miss you. Hope all is well. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so then I would go in between the 18s often with Coach Carter. Yeah. Um, and for my first two years at Shattuck, it was – very much still learning the right habits. It was kind of, I was a young kid. I was very much in like a, I would say it's like an incubation period, right? So yeah, I was yeah. like, I was laying the foundation so that when I hit that time, 17, 18, I just hit the ground running from there. Right, um, right. So for, for me, I had a really good opportunity because your dad is so good at stressing the right habits every single day. Right. Picking up all the stuff after practice, yeah. uh, not fouling and moving your feet. Uh, you know, not right. going to not going to ground. All these different things uh, right. that your dad really helped me with, uh, and all the players that he coaches is those first few years for me was really about habit forming. Um, yeah. And then once I had those right habits and the ones that I wanted to continue to work on, that's when I moved from the 16th to 18th with Coach Carter, uh -huh. and that's kind of when it kind of hit a different level um, with Coach Carter. It was. Um, I had to work on myself as a person, as a human being. Coach Carter stresses that everyone knows it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as on the field um, and then off the field. I mean, it was a really growing period. So I'd say the first couple of years was kind of like an incubation period where I was young. I was forming all these habits for my life with your dad. And then yeah. with Coach Carter, it was really uh, time to keep growing, time to perform because the 18s right. are the team that is supposed to set the standard. It's production. Right? It's production. It is. It is. It is. It is. And it's at the same time where my last two years, I was, you know, the guy that's been there the oldest. I was the one with the most seniority, the guy who yeah, sat right. at the back of the bus, the first in line for food. And so those last two years for me, too, uh, was also like, all right, can I kind of put my own legacy on my own stamp on this program, what I want people to see, yeah. and that leadership kind of started to come my senior year. Um, and then it was also the same thing. It was like Coach Carter put it down to during the week you got to basically 
set yourself up so on the weekend you have that basically that same schedule every single week so on the weekend you yeah. perform at your best at your at your top so it was like i said it was a lot of habits my first couple of years and then the last couple of years it was like okay now it's time to really push past just the basics and become more of a man on the field and off the field bro two things i mean there's a lot of there but i'm going to break it down to two things one first of all how big time was that i keep thinking about that when we obviously now we have four teams uh I think 15s, like there's so many different teams in Shattuck, but at that time when there was 16s going into uh, 18s, think about yeah. that. Bob Mullen and then Coach Carter. That, yeah. that, that machine, that machine from coming in as a, as a kid, as a boy, yeah. Yeah. going through learning the basics, learning to be on time to everything, learning yeah. the, tech, the perfect technique all the time, making sure that you are be basically becoming a – season player you're not just playing anymore you're playing with intention you're playing you're you know the basics you're doing everything right yep. on and off the field going into then talking you know just breaking down tactics beautifully understanding the game yep. I and mean, that changed my life bro that changed my oh, life yeah. but but i wanted to ask you did you did you ever see yourself as a leader before senior year because you were there longer than a lot of people um i think i think obviously john lohano you know even when even when i was on the 18s, um, my sophomore year, and he was on the 16s, you still knew that John was the captain. You still knew yeah. that John was the guy who led the team, whether it's, whether, whether it's me who I'm, I'm, you know, quote unquote above him on the 18s, yeah. or with the 16s, he was always the man in charge. You always knew that. Did you ever see yourself in that light where, you know, you were there more than most of the players at, at the club? So, did you ever see yourself become a leader before then? Um, you know, that's interesting. And I think it's um, – it was different for me just because um, I actually kind of had a realization my junior year um, that the person that I am on and off the field, I'm not necessarily a captain. Um, I just don't – and it's just the truth. I'm not right. the guy on the fields that – and you have to know yourself, right? So, like, I'm not the guy on the field that's going to come at you and say, hey, you need to push it harder or, you, you, you know, you need to – you can't make that mistake. You need to do this. You need to do that. And that's not – that's just not my personality. I'm more of the guy that is going to basically show you with my actions and my intentions that this is where we need to go and I'm going to lead yeah. by example, right? So yeah. I think that in a certain way, I do understand where you're coming from, where I saw the leadership qualities of myself, but it was never necessarily with the armband on. And I understood that and yeah, I didn't yeah. have a personal problem with that because yeah. I knew that for the team to succeed as a group in the classroom, in the dorms, not getting in trouble, on the yeah. field, there needed to be a voice with the armband. But that just right. wasn't me. There was just a different way for me to embrace the leadership qualities. And that was, okay, my work on and off the field, not getting in trouble, setting the example in the locker room, all those different right. things was more of my personality and the yeah. qualities that I had to help the team. And it wasn't necessarily the armband, if that makes right. sense. I think, um, obviously, that, yeah, that's interesting. And I, and I did, a, and I talked to more center backs yesterday and I told them, like there's you can't be a guy who leads you can't be a guy who says he leads by example i no. definitely think i think i definitely think other positions like a goalkeeper you can't be a captain unless you talk like it's or you can't be you can't really be a great goalkeeper unless you talk but i do think there's something to be said about forwards who don't really talk that much or you know wide mids or center mids whatever who don't really talk that much but just lead by example like you do score goals you know take the penalties step up when the times uh, when the time asked, like a, like an Eric Cantona type, sure. you know, um, guys who don't talk that much. And so I think it's perfect what you said, like, know your role, know what you bring to the team Yeah. in terms of if you're not a cat, if you're not a, I, I mean, I've seen it many times, guys who are immature and think that just because they have the armband means that they can say whatever they want. Right. And sometimes you just need to play. Sometimes it's up to you to do the playing. Obviously, then you have the opposite of guys who aren't necessarily that good but they, they talk very well and they, they say things in the right moments and they, and they are great captains. Um, but no, that's interesting. And I think obviously as you went to, as you moved on, I mean, you were there from eighth grade all the way to senior year. 
you know, obviously people started respecting you. They're like, wow, he's been here for a while. He's, he, he's a good player, obviously. So also I, I, I was just thinking, I want to, I want to touch on the fact that you look back now and you say Luke Hawkinson, the eighth, eighth grader becoming Luke Hawkinson, the senior, any eighth grader, I was just talking to the, to the eighth graders yesterday and it makes me realize now that that eighth grader then became the leader of Shattuck, right? Like there was no one there longer than you. Yeah. So you came through, you know, going from the bathroom, going from the bathroom saying, Hey, I need to really, I need to bring it today. I need to bring it today. You know, fighting back the feelings of, you know, this is too hard. I'm, I might need to bounce fighting through those to then becoming the senior who then looks at the younger kids and put, pulls them up. It just, for me, looking at an eighth grader now, it gives me confidence and to look at him and say, hey, look at Luke Hawkinson. He did this. You right. can you can be the eighth grader who then becomes the captain of this club. Like my dad always my dad always said, like, Gary Neville, he, he doesn't have the captain John Ben, but he's the club captain and all this stuff. And I never really understood what that meant. But like now looking back at Shattuck, looking back at John Lujano, looking back at yourself, um, you know, me with the younger kids, I was more of a captain of the younger kids, I felt like. Like, I always yeah. took them under my wing. But, yeah, yeah. But, like, being a club captain, being a captain of everyone, being a captain of the group is, I mean, I, I'm, I come back to you, eighth grade, all the way to senior year. You've been through it. You've been through, you know, being a kid and all that stuff. But that eighth grader then grew up to be the captain. So yeah. it just gives me, it just motivates me when I see an eighth grader not giving up, yeah. keep, 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 keeps pushing. I mean, now, let alone, you know, your college career and then your seat and then your, now your professional career that you're starting. Like, yeah. you know, I'm just talking about, I'm just talking about five years. I'm not talking about all the way up there. That's, that's even better. That's even more motivational. Sure. Um, so we'll touch on it now. Talk about your, your, talk about your senior year of, of Shattuck. You know, the, the, I, I sort of want to touch on a little bit more like the relationships you built with other, with other students, with other players, um, how that affected your senior year, you know, when you left, you know, being upset and all that stuff. Um, and, and let me, let me frame it because I'm, I know I still talk to those guys every day or almost every day. Yeah. Those guys, I fought on the field for them and I felt yeah. confidence from being, from us being brothers. Oh, yeah. I say I say this because, you know, even I I've had sometimes, and I, I'm sure you've had sometimes where you look at it as, I need to work on my game, I need to um, show everyone what I can do, I'm yeah. I need to be the best player on the team, and you sort of get away from the fact that these are your boys, these are your these are your brothers, instead of like relying on everyone else, you you start trying to do too much, you start trying to score all the goals, you start you try to. Um, you know, uh, you know, do your own thing. Um, so talk about like having your brothers next to you going through that, um, senior year. Um, man, it was, my senior year was a crazy experience just because, um, we all kind of knew that this was our last ride. Um, it was kind of, there was kind of a group of guys that had been there for three years. And then there was a group of guys that were there, had been there one, maybe there was their, just yeah. their senior year. Um, but we came together in a, a really remarkable way, yeah. uh, because for the first half of the year, we really struggled on the field. We, we just weren't putting it together. Um, and we couldn't figure it out. And a lot of guys split in different ways. And we kind of yeah. had different yeah. guys saying, we should do this. We should do that. Coach Carter was saying this. Um, but it was honestly probably one of my favorite years at Shattuck because in Feb, uh, I would say probably end of March, we knew we had, okay, we have four months left together before we're going to leave. We all enjoy spending every single second with each other yeah. off the field, but we just can't put it together right now on the field. So we went into the video room as a team. Uh, it was 20, 21 guys on the 18 yeah. day and just players. Jasper was the captain at the time. Uh, I was probably just right under him in terms of leadership. Yeah. And we got together, player run meeting, and we said to each other, guys, what can we do to turn the season around? And keep in mind, at the time, the DA was set up where there was, I think, 12 teams in our conference. 
Yeah. And at that time, with three months to go, there was nine games remaining. We were sitting in eighth place. Eighth place, there's no way you're going to the playoffs. There's just no way. And we said to each other, guys, can we do something truly, like, remarkable? And um, Coach Carter heard about this meeting, and he said, he, he kind of termed the phrase for the rest of the four months, can we make the impossible possible? Yo, he, yo, he comes up with these little phrases, bro, <laughs> that just get you absolutely pumped. Bro, it, it, it gave us goosebumps. And so we had that meeting. We came out of that meeting. We said, guys, we are – all in 100% all together this last four months with nine games remaining. If we win eight games, we can be a wild card spot. <laughs> and we had the next game on the weekend and it was against Chicago magic at Chicago magic with a bunch yeah, of national yeah. team players. And we scored in the last 60 seconds to win four, three. And we absolutely classic Shattuck complete grinded it out. And we won that game. And Coach Carter got us in the corner after the game. And he, <laughs> I'll never forget this for the rest of my life. It started the run. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, and he, he had to go on a flight to uh, Europe the next day. And Coach Carter of looked course. at <laughs> us, a bunch of 18-year-olds who had just gotten together the week before and said, guys, can we actually do this? Can we, make, can we do this? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, you sons of bitches did it. And, he, and everyone was just like, yeah, we started screaming. And Coach Carter said to us after that, he goes, I'm going to challenge you guys because what I saw on the field right there was something I haven't seen all year. Can we make the impossible possible? And from then on, we literally won every single game. And we won it on an eight-win streak. And we were the last wild card spot. And um, it was truly incredible. I mean, it was, it was an unbelievable experience. And it brought me so close to some guys that I never thought I could be so right. close to. Like, I, I still talk every day. We do voice messages. Um, Rafa yeah. from Brazil, uh, I still keep up with him. I mean, to go s through something like that where you are in the dorms every single day with a group of guys, put it together on the field, and then what's so truly special is there's so many failures in life where for our first half of the season, we were not good at all. No one was enjoying it. Right. But for us to say, like, come together as a group every single day on the field. Let's make this happen. Everyone buy in as a group because we enjoy being with each other, because we want to win, because Coach Carter believes in us. I mean, you, you can't ask for a better way to leave senior year. Even though we lost in the playoffs, uh, it, I couldn't have asked for a better last year. Bro, I mean, you know, obviously me having gone to Shattuck and been through all that kind of stuff and us making it to the finals and really pushing as well, like, bro, it's it's different than everyone else. Like, no one else can really understand that because yeah. you might not see these guys ever again. Yeah, that was that's the crazy part. That's like, crazy. Like, like, we're going to a boarding school where you might not – some kids live in Brazil, some kids live in Africa. Like, you know, you never you never know. And so – the feeling that you get when you are coming up to the end of your time with these guys that you've spent years yeah. with yeah. and it hits you and you're like, yo, actually maybe we need to get this going now. Yeah. But then, but then, you know, you guys left it to the last second. We did. <laughs> you guys left yeah. it to the last second. And honestly, I remember that now. I completely forgot about that, but I remember that now. And honestly, it's not about, it's not about, you know, obviously trophies are nice and um, you know, trophies accolades all that stuff is nice you know winning conferences stuff like that but yeah the and it's and it's so cliche and i'm I'm on a huge like i love cliches now like make them real kind of kind of kick yeah but like the bonds that you have are so much more important than the accolades and the trophies and the stats and all that stuff like oh, oh. you you like you always look back you always look back on that that run and you're like, you know what? We did something special here. We didn't win the league. We didn't, you know, do well in playoffs. But that run is something that's never been done. Oh, it was honestly, you, you, <laughs> it was so cool to live it. And you know what's so funny is um, our last game of the season was in Ohio against internationals and crew. And it just so happened that our um, graduation fell on the Friday Oh, no, yeah, I remember that. The Friday before we had that. to – we played Saturday and Sunday. And so Coach Carter looked at us and he goes, listen, guys, I'm not going to take your graduation from you. Right. You want to stay and you want to graduate with your friends, stay. 
And this group literally looked at each other and we said, we have two more games and we're in the playoffs. And we all missed our graduation weekend just so we could go together as brothers on a bus for 14 hours, sleep on the bus, wake up. And we smacked those two games. We smacked crew and we smacked internationals and we were in the playoffs. And how special is that? A group of guys that literally said, for the betterment of the team, for these guys that I love being with, because we're going to do this finally. I'm going to skip. We graduated on that Friday. We hopped on the bus and we left. We oh, missed the graduation I mean, parties. We missed the, the photos the whole weekend. Everyone, you know, going to the, you know, going finally as high schools to drink together in the apartments. We missed all that. We were on a bus for 14 hours so we could go to playoffs. Bro, what is the, what was the, in your head, what was the benefit of doing that? Okay. So, so, and here's what I'm saying. At that moment, you guys could have lost and been out of it, right? Right. Honestly, you guys could have said, yeah. hey, hey, we're doing this for the boys. Everyone in. We're all in. One, two, three, team. And then you could have gone and lost 3 nil to crew. Yeah. Okay? There was no guarantee. There's a guarantee that you'd have a great time at graduation. I know you'd have a great time at graduation. Yeah. Right? And, you know, hanging out with people for the last time and, you know, partying and all that stuff would have been great. But there's no guarantee that you're going to go and win. Sure. But so why did you guys do it? Why would you, why would you do that if there's no guarantee to win? <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> you, there's no answer. You can't explain it. There's literally oh, the brotherhood. You, it's a brotherhood. It, man. There's something in it, like there's tr like a true sense of like togetherness and like you said, brotherhood. Something inside of you that says, guess what? Like I would love to do this, but it matters more to sacrifice for my brothers in this situation because we've worked so hard for this, and we're gonna we're gonna go get it. And I tell you what. There was not one single person on that bus driving that 14 hours who thought that we weren't going to win those two games. There was, right. not, there was not one inch inside someone's mind who said, oh, guys, we're going to tie. Or, or, bro, we're bro, I, got, bro, I got goosebumps with that because you're not playing. You're not playing, you know, shout out Vardar during my time wasn't the greatest. You know, know. You're, not playing, you're not playing these low teams. Like you're playing Columbus Crew. Yeah. You know, you're playing a good team. And you went, you you guys went there, and you said, you know, we're gonna win this. We're gonna win this for sure. 100%. And, and it, like, I've had questions. I've had multiple questions that say, hey, does 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 the hard work really pay off? And I'm like, what does that mean? What does it mean pay off? And that's why I ask you, like, yeah. what what? Why did you do this? What you didn't? You could have lost the first game, and everyone would have been like, oh well, shoot. Yeah. But but you did it anyway. You said, okay, here's. You're like, okay, here's the, here's the partying. I could go party and I could, I know I'm going to have a good time for sure. Yeah. Or here I can sacrifice for my boys and we might win, we might lose. And it's the feeling that like something bigger than yourself, something greater than yourself. So if you guys are on here asking, is the hard work really going to pay off? Is it really going to pay off? Ask yourself, what is the payoff? What is the payoff? Because if you guys had lost that, I don't believe you guys would have would have regretted it one bit. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You can look to the guy to your right and you say, bro, I did everything I could for you. I sacrificed this for you. Sure. I sacrificed this for you. We all sacrificed and we all came together and we did this. We did yeah. this. Thing. But it, it did pay off. It did pay off. And you guys ended up going to the playoffs. Um, you know, I've been in similar, similar situations where we all had to look at each other and say, hey, what are we going to do here? Are we going to do this for each other or are we not? And just knowing that you have a, a guy next to you who's willing to sacrifice just as much as you. I mean, what, what price can you put on that? How much hard work can you do for that? There's not. Sure. sure. And like I said, so, I mean, so what, honestly, 100%, I couldn't have asked for a, a better group of guys to finish my senior year with. And we, we, we really sacrificed so much and we put it, all out on the line, and it could have failed. We could have easily – we were the last wild card spot. I think it was something Crazy. like .03 points per game we would have been yeah. out. You know what I mean? So I couldn't have asked for a better way to end, uh, and it was Coach Carter's last season. And I think yeah. the character of the team at the end doesn't speak – it couldn't speak any more volume to the man that he is and what he wants for a program and, and what he wants for a group of guys. I mean, it was crazy. Bro, and, and it's nuts that I said this at the beginning, but it comes back around. I know Coach Carter very well. I know him and I know I've been on teams where he's sort of given up for a second. I know because, and it's not because he doesn't care about us. It's not because he doesn't believe in us. 
it's because we don't believe in ourselves and we're not working hard enough for him to invest in us. He's like, why, why would I invest in you guys if you don't invest in yourself? I've been on those teams. Yeah. So you have to help yourself before you ask other people for help. Coach yeah. Carter was Coach Carter was ready to throw in the towel, rightfully so, because you guys pretty much threw in the towel yourself at yeah. the beginning. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, we'll just ride out these last eight games. I'll give, I'll rotate some guys and give them a start. But you guys said, on your own, on your own. Stop waiting for your coach. Stop waiting for your parents. Stop waiting for your your captain to yeah. come up with to come up with some idea. Do it as a team. Do it as a team. And you know, you don't have to wait for you. You don't have to. You know, I was just watching the um the Last Dance. I don't know if you've been watching the Last Dance. Yeah, like yeah. That. bro. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan got on the bus and said, "Guys, I'm only packing one suit. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna beat them in the first game. And we're gonna be done. I'm not packing another suit. I'm not gonna be here for two more games. I'm being here for one, and we're gonna finish this um, against uh, Charles Barkley. So that's that's basically what you did. You guys came together and you said, "We are going to do this. We made a decision. We're gonna do this." And you guys did it, you guys did it, and then something came up, graduation. Oh, weird schedule, weird schedule. What are you guys going to do? Do you guys really want this? And Coach Carter didn't make the decision for you. He said, if you guys want to stay, I understand. If you want to stay, great. None of you guys said you were going to stay, and you ended up going. You won. You won both games. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll tell you this, too. Before – so I forgot about this, too. Before we graduated – because we all decided that we were going to do it because we had beaten, I forget who it was the weekend before. Um, but we needed to get our session in before we hopped on the bus after graduation. Yeah. Graduation was at 10 AM. So what did coach yeah. Carter do? He said, listen guys, if you want to come out, if you want to get the workout in for the day, we need to be fit and ready to go. Did, did so I, you, did I train? Did I train with you guys that day? I think I trained. With I you don't think you did because it was just the boys. Because I know it was at six oh, yeah. thirty a.m. We were out oh, okay. before our graduation at ten a.m. and we yeah, did thirteen yeah. seventeens that day, and we were all looking at each <laughs> other and we were thinking to ourselves, "Man, we're about to graduate from high school, and look what we're doing. Everyone is on the line right now, and 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 we're doing thirteen seventeens. Which, if anyone knows that was shattered, thirteen seventeens guy." crazy stuff like it's you, legendary you want to get fit yeah yeah it did it form it forms brotherhood when you're on the line you, you know what you know what i'll, I'll do a video on 13 17s bro because that changed my life that changed yeah. my life but uh it's funny andrew i think the, the 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 main theme that you're hitting on here um and i would like to touch on it because i think it's really really important um just for any human any kid any person listening whatever it is it doesn't matter uh and it's something that i learned at a really really young age at shattuck uh and it's something i even learned even the harder way in college is yeah. what we learned in that season as a group. And I learned it even before that. And then also in college is there is a freedom and there's nothing of more importance than taking responsibility, looking yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what, that's wrong or that's not good enough or that has to change or I can do more or it, it really doesn't matter what it is. There is something so freeing and it pushes you to another level as a human being, as a player, as a group of guys, we said, you guys, we're, we're not good enough right now. We're, guess what? You may think that you're a good player. You may think that you're doing everything right as a person, but if you don't have the personal accountability, the responsibility for yourself to take, um, to take responsibility for your actions, then you're fooling yourself. You really, you really, really are. And I think that extreme accountability is something that is so powerful in teams and, and in your own life. And that's what we did in that season. That senior season with, you know, nine games left, eight games left. We said, guys, take, take a look in the mirror. We're not good enough right now. This half of the season has been horrible. We're at eighth place. Can we do this? Let's come together. And I mean, look what it ended up happening. It was, I mean, and that doesn't happen every time. I mean, we had such a special no. season. Guess what? That was really lucky. And we were really special to have that happen to us. And it doesn't happen like that every time. But it didn't, nothing could have reinforced more of the fact that when you look yourself in the mirror, you take responsibility for who you are and be honest with yourself. That's when you can break barriers. You can go yeah. beyond what you think you're capable of. Bro. I mean, I speak on it all the time about self, self analysis and just every single day breaking down, what did I do today? What can I do better? Who am I as a human being? What can I work on? What are people telling me over and over and over again that I'm not doing well? What can I do better? 
self auditing, like s literally writing myself down and just being, you know, looking myself in the mirror. It's simple. Um, like Michael Jackson said, you know, it starts with the man in the mirror. So, you know, <laughs> you know, it. can I, can I look at myself in the mirror and say, Hey, Andrew, you're not good enough today. You're not good no. enough. What can you do better tomorrow to make sure you're not doing? And, you know, I'm just stressing to everyone that it's not your coach's fault that you're not playing. It's right. not your mom's fault that you're not playing. It's not your dad's fault. It's not your brother's. It's not your, you know, it's not the, the trash man's fault. Like, yeah. guys, stop blaming other people. Blame yourself. And the thing, the thing that you're, you're talking about right now is when you take responsibility for it, it puts it in your hands. So if, I'm, if I look at myself and I say, Andrew, you're not good enough, it's your fault. I'm taking responsibility. I can change it. When you say it's my coach's fault, it's out of your hands. It's out of your hands. Right. If, right. If, what you're say, if what you're saying is true, which it is because you believe it, if it's your coach's fault, you're going to be waiting around for your coach to change it. You're going to be waiting around for the GM to change it. You're going to be waiting around for um, everyone else to change it. But when you say to yourself and you take responsibility for your actions, like you guys did, because Coach Carter, rightfully so, wiped his hands of it and said, okay, well, these guys are gone. I'm gone. No big deal. But when you guys said, we are going to take responsibility for ourselves, we are going to put in the work this week, next week, and as long as we are in this, we are going to work our butts off. You guys said that, and then Coach Carter came on board and said, okay, if that's what you really want, then we'll do this. We got this. Yep. So taking responsibility, like, yeah, you said it, taking responsibility for yourself, others will, others will come. Um, yeah. I want I wanted to say something. Um, just a random quote that I heard from uh, the Last Dance that I've really been thinking about is Phil Jackson talking about. And I thought about this because you guys had to put three. You guys had to put eight wins together. That's tough. That is very tough. Um, Phil Jackson said, you know, after they won the first the first uh, championship, and then they won the second one, and now they're trying to find the motivation to win the third. And he said that greatness is only achieved in the moment. Tomorrow's a new day. Like, he's like, you guys, you guys did something that no one's ever done or that someone hasn't done in a long time. You've won two championships in a row. You've won two championships in a row. But you won, that champ you won those two championships yesterday. Now it's time for the third one. That's gone. That's nothing. Sure. So, so, talk about, so talk about after a game, after one of those games. So you're three games in. You've won three games now. You're still five games away from playoffs. You're not even. You're not really that close. You're about two and a half weekends away. Yeah. Talk talk about what you, the process was for the team for yourself um, after winning, especially that, especially the game against um, who did you say against Chicago Magic when you guys scored late? That's, yeah. Th those are normally the tough ones. Was that the last game that you won the eighth game, or was that in the middle? No, that was the very first. That was the start of the run, bro. So the hardest time to put together some wins is after a big time win. I mean, yeah, we've, yeah. I mean, you, you, bro, I'm getting goosebumps right now, bro. All the times at Shattuck when we scored a late goal, Abdullah yeah. Al-Khaleesi against yeah. Chicago fire at the death and everyone, 30, 30, 30 players in the corner going crazy. Yeah. Talk about after all that, then saying, obviously coach Carter came to you after that one, but what about like the third, fourth win? And you said, Hey, we need to we need to keep going. This is not yeah. enough. We need to keep going. Yeah. Um, I think Coach Carter did a really good job because he kept yeah. bringing us back center to what was the end goal. So I think Coach Carter's – one of his biggest strengths as a coach was always keeping the big picture but then having the small steps along the way. It was so – it was like every single Monday you showed up to practice, you had the game on the Saturday. It was like – okay, here's our week. This is the next building block. This is the next step along the way. But then after each thing, or after every win on the weekend, all eight or nine of them, it was come back to the big picture. Look mm -hmm. what it is. Can we make the impossible possible? So it was like every single week it was a building block, one step, one stone. But in the end of that week, it was like we're another step. It's the yeah. big picture still. We're getting there. We're getting there. But just mm -hmm. keep your concentration. Keep focused. Uh, and, and he was remarkable at that. He was really yeah. remarkable about that. Bro, I mean, that obviously helps a ton. Like, having a coach like that, yeah. bringing you back to center, like you said. I mean, you're, you're literally, I'm literally going to post these again because 
I've been saying this since day one. I did a whole, I did a whole IG live on it, but going from the, the end goal and coming back to now, what sure. can I do today to achieve the end goal? Reverse engineering. And so this is the perfect example of it. You have eight games to win. What can we do today on Monday of our first game? What can we do today to put in that work to yeah. get it done? And I mean, for you guys, it doesn't sound like you guys were, I mean, I, I obviously know the team, but it, yeah. it, it didn't sound like you guys were incapable of winning games. It was, oh, just, yeah. more of, it was just more of a, an attitude and a, and a willingness. Sure. And that's exactly right. I mean, for, I can tell, I can think of one story right off the bat of my senior year with Coach Carter, um, where we had that end goal that we'd reverse engineer it, as you say, every single week. But there was times where we need to be checked on it, right? So when I talk about personal accountability and responsibility, Coach Carter would do it. There was one Wednesday um, where we there was a week we didn't have an off day, and all the boys were being they were sick of it. We we're like, yeah, yeah. guys, we we were halfway through. We had four games left, and everyone was just knackered. We were hitting that wall, as Coach Carter said. Yeah. And we were playing a five v five, and it was one touch, and we couldn't string together three passes, yeah. and. Um, Everyone was tired. Everyone was telling Coach Carter before the practice how we didn't have a day off. And it was right. like, what, you know, what's, what are we doing? So we went in the 5-5. It was horrible. Halfway through the 5v5, Coach Carter whistles, and he says, that's enough. You guys don't want to be here? You don't want to win these last four games? You know, I'm done. We can throw in the towel. Uh, I'm done with practice right now. It's done. Call it off. Put the goals away. Put all the stuff back. We're gone. Yeah. You want your off day? You're going to have it. <laughs> and... Uh, Everyone was done. We started stretching, and everyone felt completely just – felt like shit. Everyone was like, man, we, we, we have this goal. We're so close. We have four games to go. Why can't we just put in that little bit? We hit that wall. Go past it. We're going to do yeah. this. We're gonna keep going. And Coach Carter said, you know, you don't want to do it. We're done with practice. That next day, that, day, that Thursday that, of, that, of that, the day after, we had the most intense, speedy practice. Coach Carter, Coach Carter said – well, uh, I guess you got your off day because today yeah. was just unbelievable. We came on that weekend. We won 4-0 and 4-1. <laughs> and uh, the reason I bring that up is because when you say reverse engineering these weeks, there's not times where you're going to say to yourself along that way, like, I don't want to do this right now. Right. But what Coach Carter said to us in that time by canceling that practice was like, look, you're close. Yeah. I know it's been a lot of work. Every single week we have this thing where it's like, we, we got to hit these daily goals. We got to hit these daily goals. Yeah. It didn't have an off day. But there are those times where you got to look yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, listen, I got to push past to where I am right now to get to where we are going, where we're going to go. And yeah. <laughs> like I said, senior year was crazy and ended up working out really in a special way. Bro, I mean, you know, the more and more I'm doing a ton of other stuff now, not just soccer, and but when I'm doing this, when I'm doing other stuff, I find it like, when you are really going for something, when you're really going for something special, you're going to hit, and it's so cliche, and that's why I'm on it, but you're going to hit something, and it's going to test you, and it's like life or God or the universe, whatever you believe in, that says, hey, do you really want this? Do you really want this? You have to push through. It's not about feelings anymore. You have to push through the feelings and get to the principle of the matter and say, hey, oh, I don't feel like getting out of bed today. You have to, you have to, if you, if this is what you want, like coach Carter said, if this is what you want, you have to push past this. You have to get through it. If you don't, you will die. You will die. The, the dream will be dead. Like we've already gone four games, guys. We've already gone four games. We've pushed through those games were hard games. We got through them. We pushed through those, those, that month of hard work. We're halfway there and you hit a wall. And that's life saying, hey, you really want this? Do you really want this? You have to push through. And, it, and it's not going to feel good. People say, oh, it's like, you know, obviously the goal is going to feel good and all that stuff. But if you're goal oriented, you'll stop because it's like, well, maybe it's not even worth it that much. And, you know, some people would look at that as like, oh, they snuck into the playoffs or whatever. They don't really know what you went through. But going through that process, hitting that wall, getting through it, it's all about part. It's all about building those connections, those relationships. And then also, you know, doing something special requires a lot of sacrifice and a lot of hard work, um, pushing yeah. through those obstacles, like you said. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think 
I mean, like I said, uh, when I was commenting on earlier on my experience with Shattuck, it was like every, the first three years were so much about kind of like an incubation period where I was just forming yeah. these right habits for your, for what I need to do on the field, off the field. It was, it was awesome. And then those last two years was, uh, was really with coach Carter was something special. It was just different. Um, yeah. it was kind of like a performance time, but also time to grow individually on and off the field. So man, my, Sh my time at Shattuck was so special. It, it really was every single, every single time that I try to explain it to someone, you just can't, uh, even when I brought my girlfriend there for the first time, yeah. uh, just, I wanted to show her what my high school experience was like. And she, she, she goes, uh, what I, I i had no idea that this is where you went to high school i mean it looks like hogwarts you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really it's really you just can't explain it um we have four minutes left but um quick story bro quick i love you know i t we tell everyone and even like like we put up a picture or something now on instagram and someone will comment like oh is this you running 13 17s or whatever but it's like just something that is like is a staple of Shattuck, bro. Any guy yeah. you know who's played under Coach Carter knows what a thirteen seventeen is. Oh well, and, yeah, yeah, and they and and Joseph Malone just hey, got on. <laughs> just you want to run some thirteen seventeens? <laughs> bro, he never had to run them. Him, Bro Brooksy would always have him doing plyometrics and not and oh, like that. <laughs> bro, but I but I remember my <laughs> my junior my junior year was actually the hardest thirteen seventeens I had to do. My junior year was probably the hardest working group I've been a part of with Blake Jones. <laughs> Uh, Pat Barnes, um, those guys, like, you know, John Lujano, obviously, I mean, that was a special group. And, you know, we learned a lot from that year. That's why we went to the, to the rain jackets the next year. Yeah. But, um, but I remember every starting literally from the first week of training, we started out 13, 17, three sets of three, right? We did three sets of three there, 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 done, done for the day. Or we, we did that, and then we did we rested, whatever, walked to the end, come back. We yeah. did that every single day. Bro, when I tell you, we ended up getting to three sets of ten. <laughs> Coach Carter, man, that is crazy. Oh, my bro, gosh. Bro, we did, we did three sets of ten. Like, we built up every week, every week. And as we got closer yeah. to, to playoffs, we got our fittest. We got our fittest. And, um, bro, it was just like <laughs> – Bro, it was just like you, you 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 hear it, you hear it, three sets of ten, and we're like, that you can't do that. That's not yeah, possible. Yeah. But pushing through, seeing the boy next to you, seeing the seeing the guy next to you Unreal. saying, and you're yeah, saying, yeah, yo, I can't go anymore. And and I remember Wes saying, Andrew, come on, I'm injured, and I'm injured, and I'm doing it. You have to come. On. I was like, bro, there's no question. I'm doing it now. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. it now. So 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 I mean, bro, those those moments, and I remember when we did three sets of eight. It was raining. It was pouring. And in my head, I'm like, I'm like, good. We're not going to have to do them. We're not going to have to do them. Coach Carter goes, get on the line. Let's go. It's like, what are you, what are <laughs> yeah, you talking he did, about? And he, had his little, he had his little timer. Uh, and obviously, he yeah. never did the time right. He never did the time right. So, I mean, we're pushing. We're busting. We're, uh, we're busting our butt, 12, getting 11, there, coming back. 11, 12 and, seconds, yeah. Oh, and, and I'm like, I'm jogging at the beginning, and then, I, and then at the end, I'm sprinting my hardest, and I'm still just barely making it. I mean, bro, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean those those moments brought us. I mean, they toughened us up, bro. Oh fitness yeah. Fitness is a, fitness like that kind of fitness is about toughening the mind over toughening the body, bro. I'll tell you. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story of Coach Carter, my senior year. He, um, we got back from Christmas, and the entire winter period was basically get as fit as you can because we're going to have to, yeah, we weren't the most yeah. talented team. We got to be fit. Right. And coach Carter made us, <laughs> we ran a, we ran a beep test. We ran a beep test at that from Christmas. No yeah. one did anything during no, that no. Christmas period. And coach Carter was going to make a plan. Of it. He's like, I gave you a program. You needed to do this, this, and this, and this. So we ran the beep test and guys we have one minute, out, one minute left. Getting out. Okay, one minute left, and uh, yeah. guys are getting out, and Coach Carter, beep test ends. Coach Carter goes, get up. Stop stop laying around. Yeah, yeah. He walks around the field. He sets the cones up, and we're doing a possession. And he goes, if you really want to see what you can do, like how hard you can push yourself, go get in this possession game, and let's see what you can do, because that fitness yeah. was not good enough. Right. And we got into that fitness, and you saw literally, because Coach Carter was amazing at pushing you in different ways. Yeah. It, was, it was incredible. And you saw the guys who were like, okay, I, I – 
don't feel like I just ran a fitness test. Like my mind's telling me I can't. Right. Like, I didn't exactly. just run that. And then you saw the guys who were like, ah, oh, yeah, I just ran a fitness test. This yeah. is crazy, you know? But yeah, anyways, Coach Carter was unbelievable, man. Bro, I appreciate you coming on. As I tell everyone that's been on, definitely have you on again, bro. There's so much more to talk about. We haven't even gotten to college, pros, bro. We've just been that, uh, in the shattuck, but um, a lot of so, old memories, man. There's a lot of stories. Definitely, get, definitely get you back on, bro. I appreciate it. What up, guys? Um, guys, I just want to shout out, you know, obviously Luke. Pre really appreciate him being on. Um, absolutely top quality guy. Uh, not him since he was a wee man, a wee boy. But so, so happy and proud of what he's done and what he continues to do. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning for him. Um, great mindset. Definitely going to reach the top. No doubt. Um, so thank you, Luke, for being on. I really appreciate it. Um, just wanted to, just wanted to say a couple of things, guys. Um, webinar on Friday. Sign up is in the bio. If you are not on the VIP email list, make sure you sign up. Um, email will be going out with the deets on that one. Um, also, make sure that you uh, you know the email list will, is is good. It'll we send out newsletters um, uh, every other day, and um, I just sent out my six minute ab workout. Um, but guys, you know, if you're, if you're not learning from these IG lives, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, definitely need to get that checked. Um, bring in the heat every single time. Um, tomorrow, whiteboard Wednesday, we are going to break up. We are going to break apart a specific topic that I will, um, announce later today, but guys, make sure you are getting after it today, whether it's mentally, physically, whatever it is. Make sure you are taking your um, taking your game to the next level, whether that's via video, via film, or that's via physical, working out, strengthening yourself, strengthening your mind, strengthening your body. Make sure you guys are getting after it. I really appreciate you guys. Again, webinar Friday, sign up in bio if you are not on the VIP email list already. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.